Hi, it's Katrina, the home of Harriet Tubman's father. Last year, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service purchased a 2,600-acre plot of land on Maryland's eastern shore for conservation purposes. Known as the Peters Neck property, it's part of the Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge, which has lost over 5,000 acres of land to rising sea levels since it was established in 1933. This particular area, however, is projected to remain above sea level at least until 2100. Additionally, officials speculated that the property might contain the home of Harriet Tubman's father, Ben Ross. And they were right! In late April, archaeologists announced that they had discovered the site. Located near the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Visitor Center, the 10-acre parcel of land was bequeathed to Ross by his enslaver, Anthony Thompson. Ross received the land and his freedom in the 1840s, five years after Thompson died, according to the slave owner's will. It is here that a young Harriet Tubman, then named Araminta Ross, learned some of the valuable navigation skills that she used for escaping and helping escaped slaves reach freedom along the Underground Railroad. A team of archaeologists began digging last November, and after getting off to a frustrating start, they found a half-dollar coin from 1808, the same year that Ben Ross and his wife married. Although the home's foundation was missing, they uncovered numerous other 19th century artifacts that helped them identify exactly where Ross lived, including nails, brick, glass, dish fragments, pottery, and a button. The discovery was made just in time because although the land is predicted to remain above sea level for some time, it's not immune to the effects of climate change, and there's a good chance that it will soon become a marsh. Baby in a Jar In Israel, the body of a baby has been found buried inside of a jar, and nobody knows why. Archaeologists were shocked when they discovered the ancient jar, which dates back to 3,800 years old, and saw the skeleton of a baby inside. One of the theories is that the ancient people thought babies were so fragile that they needed to be protected by the environment, even when deceased, so they put them in a jar perhaps meant to represent the womb. It's a commendable idea, but not one that has ever been confirmed. We don't know why people buried infants in jars, but we do know that they did it all the way from the Bronze Age to the dawn of the 20th century. This particular baby in a jar burial was found in the ancient city of Jaffa, one of the earliest port cities on the planet. It has been continuously occupied since the year 900 BC. As part of the excavation, archaeologists also found coins from the Crusaders, the remains of two horses, and 232 seashells, probably gathered from the nearby Mediterranean Sea. The Velociraptor's Last Meal Scientists have made one of the most shocking dinosaur discoveries of recent memory. They found the bone of a pterosaur, what you might know as a pterodactyl or a giant flying reptile, inside the fossilized guts of a Velociraptor. The Velociraptor was a small theropod dinosaur, kind of like a miniature T-Rex or a smaller Tyrannosaur. This small predatory monster lived about 75 million years ago in what is now the Gobi Desert of Mongolia. But what's really interesting about the discovery is that it shows Velociraptors were a lot like modern hyenas. The small dinosaur definitely didn't jump into the air and catch the pterodactyl as it flew overhead. Instead, it probably used its sickle-shaped talons and its clever little hands to scavenge its carcass. The discovery has also shown that small dinosaurs like velociraptors were able to eat surprisingly large and solid bones, something that most animals can't do. One of the only creatures today that can actually swallow a creature's bones is the modern crocodile. Research on this case was done by an international team from Dublin, Tokyo, and Ulaanbaatar. They say it would have been too dangerous for the velociraptor to try and fight a pterosaur in fair combat since the winged creature would have definitely defeated the Velociraptor. But by finding the bones of one inside a Velociraptor's belly, we can tell that they were scavengers and probably opportunistic savages. Neolithic Salt Archaeologists recently discovered the oldest salt production housing in Britain during a dig in East Cleveland. The salt production housing has been dated older than Stonehenge. The find was incredibly rare, with researchers saying that the salt production was likely of high value to the community that ran it sometime around 3,800 BC. And it was probably passed down for hundreds of years after into the Neolithic period. The Neolithic people produced salt by evaporating seawater into a brine solution and then heating it in pots. The pots were then broken to collect the salt. 
The excavation was done by Dr. Steve Sherlock and his team of researchers. One of the reasons the find is indeed so significant is that it puts a timeline on when early Britons began changing from nomadic hunters and gatherers to settled farmers. Ancient communities who worked together to produce salt often benefited from extreme wealth. They were the capitalists of their day. The excavation of the salt production facility revealed three hearths, hundreds upon hundreds of pottery shards, old stone tools, and of course, lots of traces of salt. All of these things were key to early salt production. 3,000-year-old cheese A lumpy piece of cheese estimated to be over 3,300 years old has recently been uncovered inside a tomb in Egypt. Of course, this is no surprise as the ancient Egyptians definitely had cows, sheep, and goats, and probably made their fair share of cheese and milk using the dairy. Archaeologists discovered the giant chunk of cheese inside the tomb of Patames, which dates back to the 13th century BC. The discovery was published in the journal Analytical Chemistry, in which scientists detailed how they found the preserved cheese inside of a broken jar at the site. Chemists actually had to investigate the substance to confirm that it was indeed cheese. But it wasn't just any cheese, it was something known as kefir cheese, a type of liquid dairy that was traditionally served as a drink. How it didn't disintegrate into nothing over so many years is a testament to the quality of their earthenware jars. Sacrificial Offerings Some very strange sacrificial offerings have just been discovered at a Mexico City archaeological site. Archaeologists working with the National Institute of Anthropology and History recently found the remains of a jaguar dressed as a warrior and a young boy dressed as the god Huitzilopochtli, the deity of war, the sun, and human sacrifice very near the Templo Mayor, just behind the Metropolitan Cathedral in the historic center of Mexico City. The team of researchers believes that the offerings were put there by Aztec priests over 500 years ago, directly on the temple steps where the Aztec believed the center of the universe was located. The leaders of the Aztec civilization at the time are most likely buried somewhere close to where the archaeologists just found these sacrifices. There are supposedly three royal tombs that belong to three Aztec brothers that ruled at the same time, between 1469 and 1502. Their tombs have never been found, but chief archaeologist Leonardo Lopez Luján says that could change very soon. They still need to dig deeper into the site, and that could take some time, but they are hoping to finally uncover an emperor's tomb. They have very high expectations, but are waiting on funding to continue. Hell Ants a fossil of something known as a hell ant was recently discovered by archaeologists. The fossil shows that the hell ant was in the act of attacking its next victim. This discovery is incredibly rare, as the ant was literally frozen during its attack. It has provided experts with an unprecedented view of how these extinct and hellish insects once hunted using their scythe-like jaws and savage horns. The fossil has been dated at 99 million years old, and it was found preserved in amber in the country of Myanmar. Found along with the extinct hell ant was its victim, an extinct relative of the modern cockroach. Now, what makes the extinct ant so much more horrifying than modern ants is the way that it used its deadly jaws. Modern ants have mouths that move horizontally, but these ancient ants had mouths that moved vertically, and they also had sharp horns that stuck out of their heads. Thanks to this new fossil evidence, Scientists know that the hell ant used its jaws to hold its prey still while it stabbed its victim with its horns. But fortunately for us, these insects went extinct about 66 million years ago, alongside the last dinosaurs. Maliwawa Figures Western Arnhem Land, located in Australia's Northern Territory, is extremely archaeologically rich, containing several thousand rock art sites. New discoveries are made there every year. Last year, researchers described a previously unknown rock art style in the journal Australian Archaeology. Primarily found throughout the northwestern part of the region, the style, called the Maliwawa figures, is defined by large naturalistic human and animal figures shaded with stroked lines. The team found 572 Maliwawa paintings throughout 87 rock shelters over a distance spanning roughly 80 miles. Writing for the conversation, the researchers described the figures as typically measuring at least 20 inches high. Some are life-sized, while others are small, measuring just 8 to 20 inches high. They are red to mulberry-colored and likely date back between 6,000 and 9,400 years. Most of the images depict humans interacting with animals, with an emphasis on kangaroos and wallabies. These human-animal relationships seem to be the central focus of the paintings, 
which appear to show animals participating in human activities in some cases, according to the study's authors, who explain that scenes like these in rock art are rare worldwide. The Maliwawa figures provide an unprecedented look at how Aborigines lived and their culture and beliefs. Some of the paintings feature extinct animals, including thylacines. Many of the humans in the images are male and can be identified as such based on their genitalia, while the gender of others are unidentifiable and a small number are women. These fascinating discoveries highlight the importance of preserving Australia's often overlooked indigenous artifacts. Oldest Bedding in Scandinavia Sometime during the 7th century, two respected warriors in what is now Sweden were buried in boats atop soft, feather-stuffed pillows. The lavish bedding is unique among the 15 boat burials at the Valsgard Iron Age Cemetery near the country's southeastern coast. It contains graves dating between the 3rd century BC and the 12th century AD. Known as Valsgard 7 and Valsgard 8, the richly equipped boats that the warriors were buried in are positioned with their sterns pointing toward the nearby river, perhaps as a send-off to the afterlife. The deceased were laid to rest with shields over their bodies and helmets, swords and knives beside them. There were several animals in the graves, including horses, birds, and a decapitated Eurasian eagle owl, which may have had ritual significance in the burial. A new study dates the pillows to roughly 1,400 years ago, making them Scandinavia's oldest known bedding-related artifacts. Thanks to their remarkably preserved state, they gave researchers a rare opportunity to study the feathers, which degrade quickly and consequently have a limited presence in the archaeological record. Published in the Journal of Archaeological Science reports, the research describes an analysis of the feathers, which may have had symbolic meaning. Those used in Valsgard 7 were from ducks, geese, landfowl, such as chickens, songbirds, wading birds, and the beheaded eagle owl. Poor guy. Their presence suggests that Nordic funerary traditions involving bird feathers that are known to date back to the 18th century may have gotten their start much earlier. Shackled Skeleton Inside of an ancient Roman necropolis in France, an archaeological team unearthed the remains of adults and children still bound in iron shackles around either their wrists, ankles, or necks. Since the discovery, archaeologists have been working overtime to unravel the secrets of these chained prisoners. The excavation was done near the Amphitheater of Saints, which happened to be the regional capital during the time when Rome ruled over France. The city is actually famous for its Roman-style Colosseum, which was once able to hold 18,000 people. The graves discovered here date back to the 1st and 2nd centuries AD. Some graves contain more than one body, often with the dead positioned head to toe in small rectangular pits. One specific grave was found with at least five people inside of it. There were absolutely no grave goods found except for in one burial plot belonging to a child who had been buried with seven vases and two coins over their eyes. This seemed to be the only person given any kind of respect in death. As for those buried in iron shackles, it's not exactly clear who these people may have been. Some believe maybe they were gladiators working in the local Colosseum. Some say they were slaves, and others believe they could have been criminals. Nobody knows anything for sure just yet, especially not why they've been given such brutal and shocking burials. Thanks for watching! Which of these discoveries shocked you the most? Let me know in the comments below! And be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back soon for another video! See you later! Bye!